Hello guys, welcome to episode 9 of this series where we learn to build a web application using Rust. In our previous episode, we looked at how to containerize our application, we build docker files to build the containers and then we also looked at how we can utilize docker compose to create a sort of self-contained small network where our application can run and exist. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I want to take this a step further and then we want to look at how we can do this in a Kubernetes cluster. So we want to be able to deploy our application to a Kubernetes cluster. We'll see how we can do that. However, one important thing I think we want to address even before we move to that, we want to make sure our service is able to respond or listen to signals such as SIG hub, SIG in. Right now, we're not doing that. As a sort of matter of best practice, your application should respect and react accordingly towards handling these these process signals. So for that purpose, basically uh, signal handling, what we will be utilizing is a module called Tokyo Signal. I will utilize this and we'll see how we can listen to these signals. And because there are multiple, what we'll have to do, we'll have to have a, take some kind of a strategy where we'll, where we'll set up the listener in its own thread. And you know, the first one that gets uh, some kind of a response, we should halt uh, on that and probably end ourselves. And typically this is used uh, to you know do sort of like a graceful shutdown where uh, you might want to free resources and do certain cleanup just before your application exits and so we might not be doing much of that because i'm, I'm going to build like a very simple example to demonstrate how we can listen to and, and react to these process signals but um, but if you wanted to go into detail and look at like really um, like very good examples and mature implementation i would strongly recommend to look at the project mini redis this is a project built by the tokyo team themselves and so obviously it showcases the right way to actually build mechanism to do graceful shutdowns when when it comes to utilizing the tokyo runtime uh, and this is especially you know, necessary because we are using the Tokyo runtime and we are running multiple threads and we're doing different things in different threads, right? So we want to be able to do graceful shutdown, handle uh, cleanly exit and things like that. So for like a more advanced example, I would strongly recommend you know you can go through the source code of uh, the Mindy Letters project. Uh, so we'll look at a very simplified example in our case. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we'll do is, uh, like I said, because we're running multiple threads, we will start uh, uh, another thread will be listening to these signals and uh, responding to them on this thread. We need to import the signal module and from this uh, we will adhere to Unix package and because we want to respect uh, the Unix signals. And so from the Unix package we'll need two things. One is a signal function and then we will need uh, the signal kind. And then the signal function is something that is used to create the stream. It's very similar and akin to a channel. It's basically what we'll be receiving uh, but the semantics are slightly different. So yeah, let's try to use this. So we'll be creating four different, uh, we'll listen to four different signals, like I said. So let's create the instances for them. So first would be our hub signal. So for this we can create by passing the signal kind hang up. Uh, and we'll unwrap it to get, because the signal function basically gives uh, an IO result. And so we'll unwrap it to get the actual signal. So this gives us a signal. Then we'll listen to the second which is the interrupt. Then we'll listen to quit. Uh, so quit, yeah. And we'll listen to term. Terminate, yes. Now with that we have basically these four, if you look at the types, basically they are type signal. And so we have these four signals which we would be receiving on. What we want to do is we want to listen on all four of them and then whichever the first one we get a response to, we want to you know, terminate our application right then. So for that purpose, we can utilize the function select. And this is a pretty neat function. Basically, it allows you to create separate branches of async functions. And what it will do is, you know, the first one that completes, you would uh, execute that. And so the semantics for this would be you typically assign it to a variable because uh, you would be receiving a value on the channel. Uh, I want to just basically be logging this right now. So what we will say, right? And um, we we'll copy this a bunch of time because we will do this for each. Wait for int, quit, and done. So, right. 
right so we will listen to all these and then it will basically halt on the first one whichever one we receive on and then at the end we will say hey and give some nice message and we will just exit our process our process comes from let's see right and this should be good and so let's just quickly run our process so now that it's running what we will do is we will search for the pid uh, through ps uh, so, like I mentioned, I think before uh, the cargo run basically builds the debug binary and then uses that, runs that. And so, this is the PID of our uh, application. So, what we will do is we will send the, for example, let's send a SIG hub. So, we'll send the SIG hub to this PID and then and, and you'll see that, you know, it says clearly, hey, received SIG hub, goodbye from your mapper. And it, terminates the application just like uh, we, we thought and so this is uh, sort of a nice way you know because we run it in a separate thread uh, we will respond to the these these signals which are i think it's really important to do that it makes our application slightly better and so now what we want to do is now we will uh, move on to the kubernetes part so what we want to do is we want to deploy our application onto a kubernetes cluster for those who may not be familiar with kubernetes basically kubernetes is um, a production grade container orchestration application the main distinguishing factor about kubernetes is the fact that it takes care of scheduling for you which means that it would be uh, you know able to optimally allocate resources as a devops engineer you basically will be looking at the as your entire data center uh, as a single unit and kubernetes will be able to allocate uh, each resource uh, as per the requirements that you set it is something that you would utilize for like a large scale application when you know especially especially when you have a lot of microservices that's when Kubernetes shines the most. Uh, something like URL mapper obviously is not the ideal application that you would want to run on Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is definitely an overkill here, but we're doing it for uh, demonstration purposes. In order to have Kubernetes up and running in your local environment, uh, you have we have basically a few options. One of those options is uh, Minikube. Uh, Minikube, I think, was probably one of the early softwares that came around uh, that allowed you to you know, easily set up Kubernetes on your local dev environment. Then, uh, apart from this, Docker for Mac has inbuilt support for uh, enabling Kubernetes. And the uh, one that I'm actually using as of right now is Kind. It's actually, I think, probably the one that came around uh, more recently, but I think it's it's evolved really well. And uh, so in order for us to actually get an entire Kubernetes cluster running, especially if you want it running to include and to have an ingress controller, what you have to do is you have to basically create your cluster in a slightly different way. You have to provide certain extra configurations to kubeadm, which is the tool kube kind uses underlying to actually create the network. And you have to provide it with some extra port mappings and configurations, which may it ingress ready and sets up okay the port forwarding for uh, you know the port 18 port 443 and so this just sets up the network so that it's ready the controller will then be able to set up the rest of it here is nginx is the one that i'm most familiar with and the one that we use the most so for my uh, kubernetes network right now we have ingress nginx so yeah to give you uh, like a quick thing basically you know all the control pane components and everything basically will be running on your machine uh, all of them are obviously in in within the cube system namespace and the ingress controller uh, runs under the namespace ingress nginx and so that basically sets up a full-fledged uh, kubernetes uh, cluster on your local machine which we can now utilize to deploy uh, our url mapper service on top we would basically be uh, deploying uh, postgres and then we will be deploying URL Mapper RS, uh, and then obviously we will make sure that uh, URL Mapper RS is able to communicate to the Postgres. Uh, in order for us to deploy, basically I will pick up, uh, you know, one of the commonly give provided uh, examples. Uh, and so what I'll do is, as per convention, we'll I'll create a 
separate directory called gates and i'll keep all my uh, configurations for the kubernetes here we'll create the configuration for postgres and as you might be able to see here in the example we basically will be creating two separate objects for each one is of course a deployment and then you need a service services need whenever you want to communicate with the application so we'll copy this and we'll modify this to be a little bit more simpler uh, for our use case we'll let's name this as postgres so we'll do uh, and we'll keep everything in the URL mapper RS namespace. Uh, I think it's a good uh, practice to keep everything in a separate namespace. Um, the labels we are going to rely on, uh, we'll say, okay, app Postgres. Okay, uh, the name again is going to Postgres. The image is going to be Postgres. For service, again, we say just Postgres. Uh, the namespace we want again is URL mapper RS. Um, for this thing again I, I don't need a node port because we have ingress uh, basically we will think uh, the port for i see uh, sorry for postgres is 5432 i think this should mostly be okay uh, the only thing obviously we need to additionally specify is we want to specify environment configurations and uh, so we want to provide three different environments uh, one is postgres db for to set up a database this is going to be url map uh, and uh, then we would need user value for this would be postgres and password value for this is admin this should be good so let's we would apply this for postgres now once we apply you'll see it says basically hey uh, the namespace we mentioned url map rs is not available it doesn't exist so let's create the namespace okay and then we'll apply this again and when we look at the thing right now it's container creating creating and now it's running we have postgres up and running in our namespace url mapper rs pretty cool create the uh, url mapper configuration here the name is going to be URL mapper RS because this, this, that's what we want to deploy. Replica app again URL mapper RS. Update this. Um, image is URL mapper RS v2. We'll use the v2 image and we'll modify the environment. All we need is the database URL. And the value for this is going to be Postgres. Postgres colon admin at the rate Postgres slash so url mapper part okay so that's all we need uh for the deployment to deploy a url mapper and the service for url mapper basically we again it will be url mapper rs namespace will be this and the selector would be this the port however again now the port would be 3000 we can um now deploy our application RS will apply. Let's look at the pods and hey, we have our application up and running. What we can do is uh, we can basically set up port forwarding for our actual pod from the URL mapper RS. And what we need to do is also specify the namespace. And now the port forwarding is set up. So now when we say to a local host, thousand you see the app is able to communicate with it but like i said obviously this is not something ideal what you ideally want is to be able to use the ingress controller to be able to communicate to your application that's what will you will be doing in a production ready application uh, you will set that up behind a, an ingress controller so that can, the network traffic that is coming from the outside world through your to your website would then actually go to the actual service and so let's let's do that now let's create an ingress thing for it uh, so going back to kind's uh, ingress documentation they've also kindly given a sort of a very simple example of how to create an ingress object for your app application and typically it goes like this basically you create an ingress object with some basic metadata and the main thing is you specify all the paths that you want to um, you know, set up uh, to be forwarded to a specific service and so right now we are only exp um, exposing url mapper service so we already only need one to specify one path so let's do that Uh, the key here is the the namespace the api uh, the networking gates.io slash v1 this is the one we need and we are going to create a, an object of kind ingress 
uh, metadata is going to be a name is uh, we'll say URL mapper RLS, RLS. Uh, we would also need to specify the namespace uh, URL mapper RS again and then we will create the spec rules and we need for HTTP we need the paths and path type is going to be prefix again for us and path is going to be just the root and for this we will say hey the backend is going to be the service with the name url mapper rs and the port for this is number 3000 i think that's all we need basically yep this is going to be it so now that we've created this now let's apply again to for this to take effect and yeah you obviously will notice that the deployment and the service are, were unchanged because nothing changed however the ingress was created and now uh, that this has been done uh, and our pods are up and running since we've now created the ingress and we've said hey the path uh, you know the root path is going to be mapped to the url mapper service now we will be able to say hey curl localhost let's switch to our curl interface um, uh, so we've changed this to localhost and so now when we hit slash we see all mapper is running when we go to slash github it says hey uh, key does not exist and so let's create the github the authorization will be the same again and then now when we go to slash github we get the redirection right so our application up and running within a kubernetes cluster and that's all you need to actually deploy it to kubernetes all right awesome i wish uh, this was very helpful i think this would kind of conclude the, at least the back end portion of our application what i'm going to be doing now in our future episodes is going to focus maybe on the front end side of things and so what we will do is we'll take because we have an API, so we'll, I'll take that as an opportunity to create sort of the admin interface, which will allow me to create uh, and manipulate the URL map data. Obviously, we've been using the HTTP JSON API and we'll be using curl to actually do our stuff. It would be obviously nice to have like a web user interface. And so we'll, we'll try to do that. And so we'll see maybe perhaps, you know, we'll take up some common frameworks uh, and maybe I'll do first one in vanilla JS, uh, one in React JS, we'll take probably one in Vue JS. And, and if you guys have any suggestions, we can take some others as well. And so we'll try to build a very small, clean UI to enable us to manage the, the URL mapper data. That'll be pretty cool. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for the continued support.